Well, I think we've hit the appointed hour. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Jeff Crow, and I am a uh, partner with Norwest Venture Partners. We're a, a venture capital firm based in Palo Alto, right down, uh, right down the peninsula here. Uh, and we're very, very active in investments in uh, advertising, e-commerce, among another number of areas in IT. Um, one of the areas that I uh, spend a lot of time looking at is um, advertising and e-commerce, coupons, engagement advertising, um, all uh, as well as uh, we invest heavily in the mobile area as well. So all themes uh, that we're going to touch on today uh, with our panel. Uh, we're very excited to have uh, uh, three case studies to present to you uh, regarding the future of online promotions. These are all three pretty uh, advanced instances of what um, large uh, corporations, large brands are doing to drive engagements with their consumers using some combination of social and or mobile uh, coupons. And uh, so we have some really interesting results from these uh, three uh, case studies. And we want to share them with you today. Uh, the format that we're going to uh, go through is we're going to have um, each case study where a case study is a combination of uh, a brand and an associated technology vendor who's working with the brand, they're going to present their case study. They're each going to take about uh, 15 minutes. If we end up having time for a couple questions at the end of their, at the end of their particular presentation, the 15 minutes, we'll take it. Otherwise, we're hoping to save about 15 minutes for Q&A at the uh, end of the presentation. We've asked the presenters to give you as much data as they can comfortably do regarding their campaigns, specifically what they're doing. So I think we have some real interesting results from these, these campaigns to share with you. The reason that we've brought this together, this, this uh, group of panelists, and wh why we're so excited about this is that we think one of the real interesting frontiers in advertising is engagement advertising. And how do you engage the consumer uh, to do something that really goes beyond what might be a passive viewing of a display ad? And so we think that we've got three good examples of what uh, brands and vendors are combining to do with engagement advertising, and we want to take you through uh, those results. I personally am very excited about this, uh, about this arena. It's an, it's an opportunity, I think, for a lot of innovation in the world of advertising. So uh, we have um, uh, three pairs today, if you will, of presenters. Um, we have uh, the first uh, coming up will be Brad Klaus, who's the co-founder and CEO of uh, Extol along with uh, Mike Georgioff, who's the director uh, at Redbox, and they're going to talk to you about what Redbox has been doing in this realm. After that, we'll have uh, Tony Francis of uh, Coca-Cola and Dorian Porter of Moses talk about what Coke has been working on in this arena, and you, that, was, that was part of that uh, preview uh, video attraction you just saw. And then we'll finish up with uh, Vijay Pillar of Social Twist and Michael McDowell of Sara Lee and talk about what, uh, what, uh, what we're doing um, uh, in that, what Sara Lee's doing in that arena there. So we're going to have three case studies go. Each one's going to go for about 15 minutes. We're going to start out with uh, Brad and Mike. So guys, take it away. Thanks, Jeff. You want me to kick it off? Yeah, go ahead. So we're going to discuss, uh, I'm, I'm Brad Klaus, CEO of Extol. Uh, Mike and I are going to be discussing uh, how Redbox and Extol turned loyal customers into social marketers. We're going to lead with an intro into a little bit about Redbox and their campaign objectives, so I'll hand it over to Mike. Thanks, Brad. So I am Mike Georgioff, Director of Partner Marketing and Business Development at Redbox. I thought we'd kick off with an explanation of what Redbox is in our history since we are in the heart of Netflix country. So we Redbox started actually back in 2004. We were actually part of McDonald's, and it was a concept to bring folks in use movies as a magnet to essentially serve more burgers and fries. We quickly realized that the, uh, the appeal of that concept extended far beyond quick service restaurants. Americans basically were craving easy, fun, affordable entertainment, and that's what Redbox offered them. So starting in 2005, we began signing up a number of America's top retailers. All the folks you see there, whether it's Walmart, Super Value, Kroger, 7-Eleven, they're all Redbox clients. They all have Redbox locations in their store where consumers get the hottest new releases for a buck a night. With that real estate and those partners, that, 
those phenomenal brand names associated with us. We quickly reached uh, a billion to, uh, billionth rental and $1.2 billion in revenue in 2010. So it was a wild, wild ride, six years to go from zero to 1.2 billion. It's something that consumers responded to. They continue to respond to today. And right now, 2011, we continue to grow quickly. We're in 20, 26,000 locations nationwide, and we're adding more every day. So this is what you actually came here for, though, the, the social piece of it. Redbox is, we are huge, huge believers in social. We don't spend on traditional advertising. We don't spend on traditional marketing. For us, it's a business that is built on word of mouth and social advocacy. So we're always looking for new innovative things we can do in the social space. However, whenever we look at that and say, what are we going to do next? What's the next big idea we can present to consumers? We always start with where the brand came from, looking at how the brand was built, and what core strengths and competencies we have to work with. So that's what you'll see at the bottom of the slide. We are fortunate enough to have a product, movies that are inherently social. People love to talk about it. If you saw Black Swan, you're going to have that conversation with your friends about whether it was the best movie you've ever seen or maybe it was a little too weird for you. But that's, people want to talk about it. They want to share. They also, nowadays, post-recession era, want to talk about a great deal. And a buck a night for a movie is about as good as it gets unless you make it free. And we also have couponing capabilities, which we'll get into, that allow us to reward our consumers with free rentals, which they absolutely love. So that's our first brand strength, the heritage that we grew up on. Second piece is, even before we got into social, the company was built on, we invest in the product, and the company was built on old-fashioned word of mouth. So the, time, the type that happens at a water cooler, end of the driveway when you're picking up your newspaper, that's how Redbox grew. We put out a bunch of great kiosks. People loved the product, the service. They told people about it. Last piece is we made it super easy, whether at the kiosk, on our website where you can do online reservations, or in our mobile apps. It's always been about a super easy experience for Redbox because if a consumer has to think too much about something, it's not that fun. They're not going to do it. They're not going to engage. So we took all those and said, what's this next thing for us? What can we do to, what can we do to create buzz to drive revenue? And for us, that was a social referral program. And we had a couple of needs. It needed to get up quick. We're a fast-moving company. We like to learn quickly, get things out in the market. And it had to be branded. It had to look like the rest of the red box experience, what consumers would expect from us. So we started with that. And the, that was the thing, the new social promotion for us. And the objectives we were going after was first, buzz at a large, large scale. And then second piece was, Let's turn that buzz into actual revenue, actual dollars. And for us, we are at our heart, we're a commerce company. We rent entertainment. We're there to make money. And so for us, campaigns become successful when you acquire new users and they start spending money with you. So that was where we, what we set out to do. We quickly realized uh, we couldn't do it ourselves. And that's uh, how we found Extol. And a uh, solution Brad's going to talk to you a little bit about. Thanks, Mike. Um, so we were super excited when Redbox came to us because it's what we do. We turn uh, brands' customers into social advocates and social marketers on their behalf that drive ROI. So a little bit about I'm going to spend very little time on Extol. We're a San Francisco-based company. We are a social marketing platform. We have a suite of engagement applications that can reside anywhere from brand pages to Facebook brand pages with the goal being to uh, uh, make them look and feel just like they're interacting with the brand and have customers uh, engage the loyal customer base to turn them into social marketers on behalf of the brand. And uh, as you can see, we've done that with a number of customers on this slide. Um, our applications tend to work uh, cross vertical and, and for all sizes because it just makes sense. If you have loyal customers and you engage those customers to refer their friends or to take some action on behalf of your brand, they will do it. And so that's the premise of our solution. Um, so the, uh, when Redbox came to us, we said, OK, of the application suite that we have, our uh, social referral application probably makes the most sense. And we had a limited period of time, which we'll talk about here. And so 
Uh, with that, what we did was we took Redbox's creative assets and we uh, took our application suite. And within a two-week period, we had built a social referral platform that looked and felt just like Redbox's brand, as Mike was mentioning. With the goal being uh, to start, engage their uh, existing loyal customer base, of which they have you know, a huge number of very loyal customers, to create a recommendation uh, about Redbox and then share that recommendation vis-a-vis uh, uh, vis social networks uh, and email, which is still a, a large social channel. And so this is, the, uh, this is a screenshot of the uh, branded solution that we offered whereby a customer would come through, write a recommendation uh, with the click of a button, could post to Facebook, post to Twitter, send via email, the uh, idea being get the positive word of mouth out to their friends. Um, the second, the ultimate goal, obviously, was to get those friends to convert and to get them to click back to the Redbox environment and actually take some action and be become new customers. And so Mike will talk about how we, uh, how we did that. Um, ultimately, we were really excited because the, this all led up to a, um, uh, there was a, a short period of time where we could implement this because there was a uh, promotion that Mike will be talking about around St. Patrick's Day, and we had about one to two weeks before St. Patrick's Day. And so we were thrilled that we were able to kind of uh, work with Redbox and get this solution out by then. And, and uh, that's a good segue into how you promoted the program. I think these programs are really, really successful when the marketers do a really good job of promoting them as well, and Redbox did. Absolutely. So we had this uh, great concept, a social referral program. Everyone at Redbox super pumped up about it, but it's, it's never as easy as you build it, they will come. You need to promote it. You need to get people into the program. And this is where Redbox, we, we we're fortunate enough to have a huge collection of uh, owned and earned media assets, and we brought them all to bear to push this St. Patrick's Day campaign, basically refer to your friends, get lucky with a couple movie rentals. The first place we always start is, for us, at retail. That's our location-based marketing. It's old school, but we have 26,000 locations. They generate 260 million impressions a week. And so that's where we start. We put up a decal that you'll see there at the bottom, directing consumers what the program was about, how they could earn a compelling reward, where to go to engage deeper into it. We were basically leading them into the digital experience for the Refer Fred program. So that's where we started. We also marketed it on our website, uh, which draws about nine million uniques a month. We took a look at how we will use our, our email database. It's 22 million strong, but for this one, we thought it'd be wise to target our most avid, uh, hyperactive users, the ones who are most likely to be influencers and really get them engaged in the program. We also pushed on our Facebook page, there's about 2.5 million users, uh, our Twitter feed. Uh, we went all out on this one because we thought it was a, a very valuable program. And we'll get to the numbers in a little bit, but the engagement was on a, a very large scale. Um, and it actually led folks to a meaningful, meaningful reward, which you know, Brad will show you what you got when you engage with this program. Do you want to take this one? All right, or I'll take this one. <laughs> I don't mind that. We, so, uh, the big thing for us here is, uh, this is you know, the coupon part of social, right? Which is, we believe at Redbox, it's all about the power of free. Uh, percentage off or a sample of something, it's not gonna get people to really do what you want. You need to give them something free, and there's uh, all sorts of studies on the psychology and how that changes someone's behavior. And we're huge believers in it. And fortunately, it's not just something free, but it's a movie, and it never gets old. You can win as many free movie nights from Redbox as you want. You're always going to have a new release to watch. You're always going to consume something different. It's always an experience that's valuable to your family and friends. So that hook is extraordinarily, extraordinarily compelling when it comes to changing behavior. And what we were able to do is make it very simple when, for folks as they were earning these credits to bank them, to use them online to reserve movies so that they knew when they went to the store it'd be there for them to pick up. And that was really, that's the key to success, is giving them something meaningful. And so to echo that, the, the key in referral programs tends to be um, the customer wants to give the friend something meaningful, and in this case, Redbox put together a very meaningful coupon, if you will, which was a free movie rental. And the results were... Yeah, and so I can't go into financial specifics. We're publicly traded and have an earnings call coming up in a couple of weeks, but 
what I can say, say and what you'll see on the slide here is that this campaign checked all our boxes for success and it's still going strong. It, it, we, we got it out there in two weeks. Uh, we move fast, we need partners who move fast and we got it out there and it looked great, it was branded. Um, the scale of engagement was massive. First 30 days, 200,000 customers signed up to be part of this program. We also, the influencers in that crowd, really did some strong work. We weren't just seeing people sign up and then die away. It was creating the buzz we were looking for in the Facebook realm, in Twitter. We were getting clicks, we were getting action on it. And we can't get into specifics, but it is, we're getting conversions, we're making money off of it uh, at a scale that we're very happy with. So it's, uh, you know, all in all, uh, something I think that came together, very compelling social and coupon program. Looks like we still have a few minutes. If there are any questions, we can take them now or uh, at the end of the sessions as well. Is that what you want to do, Jeff? Sure. Yeah, take a couple minutes. Great. Any questions? I think the question was, um, did you, could you transi transcend this into a lo location-based application that was easy to use so that you didn't have to give a free uh, kind of coupon away? Yeah. So it, it's a great question. And if you don't have to give something away for free, all the better. Um, but what we're realizing is so uh, we're at a certain point in the company's maturity where the scale that we're at, we're bringing in its 30 million plus active renters in a quarter. We've and we've got kiosks out there everywhere. We've saturated markets with them in, in a good way. But what that says is we've picked up that low-hanging fruit in terms of folks who are naturally going to gravitate to that red box offering. We're picking up more people as blockbusters running into trouble. But the question is how do, you, how do you get people to really work for you and take that extra effort to do something incremental and drive customer acquisition that we weren't seeing before? And that's where that that's where that hook comes in is, this is it's, you know, the solution was extraordinarily simple to use. The tools were all there, but you're still asking someone to go one step further than they would on your behalf, to register, to broadcast it out, to really become a marketer, do that work for you. And to do that, it, that's a level beyond, it's a level beyond telling someone with a water cooler, hey, I love Redbox, it's a buck a night. And so that's why we brought in that reward, to get the folks who really were engaged with it and get them to do the little something extra and to say thanks. You know, if you're doing that level of work for Redbox, uh, we really believe it's, you know, it's worth a couple extra free movies. And I'll add to that across our customer base, it is, uh, it's important to give the friend a good deal, right? So I as a customer, even if I'm a brand advocate, many brand advocates will share on their own, but many brand advocates will share more if they feel like their friends are getting a, a, you know, something valuable in exchange. So, you know, the way that we think about it is, you know, you probably pay for customer acquisition in many different ways, whether it's, you know, in different channels, affiliate search, display, et cetera, et cetera. Why not, uh, you know, why not have your customers be able to give very compelling rewards and get the word of, of mouth out about your brand? So it is important to give the friend something that's meaningful. And I think we're down to, we're, we're, we're out blinking. of time at this yeah. point. Great. Thank you, guys. Well, I'm Thank you. Next pair. So we have uh, Tony Francis of Coca-Cola, Dorian Porter of Moses are going to talk to you about what Coca has been doing in the, this realm. Great. Well, I am uh, Dorian Porter. I'm the CEO of Moses. We are an uh, interactive mobile marketing platform, especially around uh, events and sponsorships. And uh, we're going to do a quick overview on uh, mobile marketing and Coca-Cola. Uh, talk a little bit about sponsorship and event activation. Go into a direct case study with the Essence Music Festival so you can see it. We'll play the full video. It's one minute long. Uh, a few other initiatives that that's leading into and then talk a little bit about the goals and objectives uh, of the program and, and mobile in general. Uh, to my left is uh, Tony Francis. He's running mobile strategy uh, as part of the global t uh, connections team for Coca-Cola. Uh, helped uh, be a key part of uh, a 15-person team putting together a mobile center of excellence. We'll talk a little bit about the mobile perspective for Coca-Cola for Coca and leading into this specific uh, case study. 
Tony. So yeah, this is Tony Francis. Um, and I have basically the responsibility, and it's a big responsibility, in our mobile marketing initiative. So basically, I look globally, what is the role of mobile, how we connect with our consumers, how we support our customer base um, in our marketing initiatives. And if you look at a company the size of Coca-Cola, and I think this, a lot of people have seen this in the charts this week, um, but 38 years to reach 50 million people on radio, 13 years to television, four years to internet, three years on the iPod. That's to reach 50 million people. Nine months to reach 100 million people on Facebook. And actually, if anyone saw Manny's session earlier, I think Cityville hit 90 million since December. So as a, as a company, clearly digital is key for us. Um, as an old, mature company, you know, very conservative and really want to make sure that we do this right and that basically we do it. A lot of what you'll hear from me is organically and understanding what our consumers are doing and what is passionate for them and how we can be a part of that. So um, to help support some of that, clearly the numbers demonstrate. Um, 1.5 billion TV sets, 1.5 billion computers online, 1.8 billion smartphones. The one number that's not up here is 1.5, 1.6 billion Cokes consumed every day. So think about that, one Coke in one hand and a phone in the other hand. We, we can't ignore that, right? So um, very, very impressive and very, very important to us. And so part of what we're gonna talk about today is really just some of how we look at our overall framework, how we market, how we come to market, and how we communicate. And clearly, you know, a partnership with Moses um, is just one example of basically how we're doing that. So we'll share that case study, and hopefully you'll see through the case study and also some of the other initiatives that we're taking on really why that's important to us. But really in terms of what, you know, the changing landscape and where we have to invest and where we have to win, paid media is, is still critical for us um, and basically a heavy focus. Um, our own media, our properties, you know, the, the Coke logo, the bottles, the vending machines, if people have seen Freestyle or the interactive vending machines, we have a lot of own media, a lot of our digital properties, um, and also our own media. Our consumers basically own our product. We do not own the product anymore. So, and that's evident and basically in how we behave and how we act obviously um, is, is front and center and is commented on um, by our consumers. And if you look across that, the mobile phone explosion is key and is basically heavier in the mix than it's ever been before. And just getting ahead of that and understanding that. Um, as Darian had mentioned, um, within our North America operations and actually within our global operations, we've actually formed um, mobile center of excellence. We've already um, had a lot of time and a lot of experience in you know, how we work in the social world and what our, what our approach to social media is. And this is really a, a combination of our key vendors, our key partners, and also the key constituents. So, you know, how do we support McDonald's? Okay, how do we, how do we support our key customers? How do we, you know, take our food services group, our brand marketers, and, and how do we work across basically paid and owned media and basically effectively use, you know, basically what is mobile? So that, that, that is the size of the challenge, and on a global scale, trust me, it is a challenge. Um, but, but hopefully one, I think, that we're getting there. So, so getting back to what, what we're talking about today and really around um, sponsorship and event activation, um, and I will let Darian talk through basically what we have done with the Essence Music Festival, why that's important to us, um, and then basically talk more about you know, really how we extend that into basically other activations. Thanks, Tony. So, uh, in some regards, the way we're working with Coca-Cola maps to kind of the evolution of our startup. So as uh, anyone who's been around startups knows, you kind of have to bob and weave a little bit at the beginning. And we might have started as a broader interactive mobile marketing platform thinking about all the great places that mobile could work really well. But one of the things we discovered early is that when there are passionate people gathered, when, when passionate people are gathered in one place, uh, we started to drive some really incredible results for our customers. At the time, a few years ago, it was in the music industry. We expanded into some sports verticals. Um, and all of a sudden, we learned that mobile worked really well when it was around passionate people at live events or around passionate things like uh, 
football tournaments or basketball or music. Um, so we've tied the platform more to out of home, more event driven, and it's something that's really started to um, started to work for, for the company, for the customer base, uh, as we connect the offline world, the physical world, to an overall digital strategy. So um, in looking at Essence Music Festival specifically, this is a three-day music festival in New Orleans. Um, this was our first opportunity to work with Coca-Cola last year um, as we had engaged with them over the course of kind of identifying their goals and strategies around mobile. This became the one event that was going to be an initial tester. You know, would people respond to our marketing around Essence Music Festival um, using the mobile phone? Uh, for the African American marketing team at Coca-Cola, this is a pinnacle event. It's something they've been associated with for 12 years. Um, and in this case, uh, they regularly have huge numbers that attend this event. And Coca-Cola puts a very large marketing presence together um, and, in fact, is the presenting sponsor of what's called the main stage moment uh, every night. So we put together a three-part plan for the activation. Um, there's a video I'm going to show you on the first part, which was essentially a contest to uh, or an opportunity to attend a barbecue with Coca-Cola. Uh, and I'll show that video and then talk about that specific uh, case study. Uh, the next night, there was a seat upgrade involved where people used their mobile phones to request the ability to upgrade their seats. In fact, people voted to see who pe which people would get up to the front row. And then on the third night, kind of closed out the weekend's festivities with some fan-generated content using pictures in the mobile phone um, and making that interactive. So let's just quickly see the one minute of video that we started with. Hmm. There we go. Get your phone out. Get ready. We are gonna do some texting right now. Coca Cola is giving away 500 mobile tickets and four VIP tickets for you and a guest. You would text the word "celebrate" a space. Then your first and last name to 66937. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. We talking about good food, good music, and ice cold Coca-Cola beverages. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here, here, here. Now, boom. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. So that was one example. Let me get back to the slides here, if I can do that. And then one example of one of the activities. And in 30 seconds, basically 3,100 people pulled out their phones and tried to win those barbecue tickets. And those 500 were given away in the same 30 seconds. And what I love about the case study is a year prior, you basically had street teams walking through the city of New Orleans handing out tickets to people to come to this barbecue, not knowing if the people you're handing those tickets to want to go to the barbecue, uh, have any interest in Coca-Cola, et cetera. And here in front of this audience, you can ask the consumer, does anyone want to go to a barbecue? Give away those tickets directly to the phone, have 3,000 people put up their hands, sometimes twice, put up their hands twice, uh, using their mobile phone and get that ticket directly to their phone right at that point of inspiration, that, that time where Coca-Cola is in front of them offering that experience. And I think that that invitation into that experience uh, that Coke extends and that the consumer uh, ex uh, accepts is a really powerful experience as part of a brand experience um, because they're going to get the, the uh, impressions as part of that main stage moment anyway. But then how do you, number one, make it more engaging, and number two, start tying it to an overall digital strategy, potentially tied to email, uh, database building, or Facebook uh, connection. How do you start making those connection points at that live event? And then just before I hand it back to Tony, um, just the idea that you know, roughly 16% of the audience participated, and of those, about one in five after that experience opted for an in ongoing connection with the brand as part of a database building effort. So those kind of uh, numbers, knowing that these people are interested in engaging with you and then converting those um, become very compelling. 
And let me just add to that. I think in terms of live events and, and audience participation, we, we do see higher participation and we do see higher acceptance. You know, you, you're at the event, um, be it a sporting event, be it a live event, the ability to engage, and, and as Darian said, you know, to, to hand out tickets on a street corner versus to engage mobily. And a lot of what you'll hear us talk about is connecting the online to the offline back to the online and basically living where our consumers live. So, you know, those consumers who want to participate, we see a higher involvement, a higher engagement. You know, consumers really want to interact with our brands. They really want to tell us stuff. And I think, you know, through events like this and really integrating, you know, compelling live experiences into this um, is, is key. Um, and, you know, as I said, this is really a, a start for us. We did this, was it July, July of last year? Um, and we've run, and just here's some example of basically where we are actually working further. We've just finished up the um, Coca-Cola Beach Spring Break, which is, is um, you can imagine, is a, is a big event going on this time of year, and, and for Coke to basically be part of that is, is, is key for us. Um, one area that I do want to talk to you about a bit, and I think it also just extends into how we're using, you know, so the role of couponing, the role of live events, the live of mobile, the, the role of mobile and how we integrate this organically is a program that we're running currently with Moses um, through the Sprite Step Off. And what this event is, is fraternity stepping competition sponsored by Sprite, takes place in key cities, basically winners will basically go to the Step Off finals in Washington DC, grand prize, uh, 100,000 to that fraternity. So it's, it's a significant event. It is, has a great grassroots effort within the U.S. throughout the college system. Actually, I was at the Fox Theater two weeks ago. You know, 3,000 highly involved college students. Um, the ability to bring that interactive experience into the program, the ability to have Moses on there with basically the text to screen, the pics to screen, the, you know, the fact that we can offer discount coupons and the way to get into these events and drive participation, that, that's one thing, but also to take our main thrust campaigns and take what we're doing around Spark Parks initiative. Um, the fact that you know, I can have an MC on stage that basically says, text Spark, to 77483 and LeBron will call your phone. And for us, that gets basically direct connections around the passion points of our consumers, basically where they're doing it, and, and for us, that earned media aspect of this and that involvement is greatly increased because we're basically down where our consumers are who want to engage with us, so highly targeted and highly effective. So that's another example of basically where we're working. So, I mean, for me, just to, to summarize a couple of the couple of key takeaways, um, we really, really, really see the value of mobile. We are really respectful that this is a highly personal device that we have to be invited in. It has to be organic with what the, the consumers are doing. And, and to us, it, it is really our consumers do want to engage. It, it basically gets recruitment for us. It gets people drinking our product, but only if we do it right. So getting that balance and getting that that mix and making sure that we're effectively using mobile is key for us. Um, and also, in terms of how we do this, and again, be it couponing, be it brand experiences, you know, our opportunities clearly are around making sure that mobile fits within our entire marketing communications. It also means we have opportunities around digital vending, mobile wallet. Again, to the ability to make it easier for people to buy our products, that's utility the ability to basically give those great experiences and with our great partners is somewhere else where basically is a key focus area for us. And again, one Coke in one hand, phone in the other hand, create those connections and allow our consumers to basically engage with us further where they want to engage. Thank you. Okay, well, we're exactly on time here, so I think we're going to go to our, uh, uh, our third case study, and we can have uh, questions uh, for you guys uh, at the end. So we've heard an example of social and couponing, which was uh, the red box example. We've heard an example of mobile and couponing, which was the Coca-Cola example. And now we're going to come up here and have um, uh, Jimmy Dean, Sarah Lee come and talk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Vijay Pullor. I am the founder and CEO of uh, Social Twist. Uh, I have with me Mike here from Sarah Lee. 
Sara Lee is uh, probably a lot of you must have had bought some product or regularly buy products on your grocery carts uh, from Sara Lee. It's a very large uh, CPG company. Uh, just a little background about Social Twist. We are a referral marketing, social marketing platform. We help brands spread their message through their users uh, to the user social network. Uh, we've uh, been in existence for two and a half years now. 91,000 websites use our product. We've got very marquee customers, including 38 of the Fortune 500. Uh, so just to explain a little bit more of uh, what we do, I want to just uh, step back a little bit and see what digital marketing uh, is and you know where is this big social opportunity. As soon as people hear the word social, they see, they think about it's big. You know, every number that comes off, anything you hear about social is very big. Uh, examples like uh, Twitter, I think, is reaching about uh, 100 million tweets a day. Facebook adds about 5 million users every week. And an average, address, uh, average person's address book has got 25 email addresses. So pe people are highly connected. To everything in social and uh, inter social interactions are uh, really going very big. So what's the big opportunity for brands in social? If you step back and see the left side, uh, right at the bottom, you got search and uh, display ads driving traffic to your website, and then email marketing and social media marketing, uh, creating Facebook fans and Twitter followers and so on. So this is the, uh, the digital marketing. But if you see, what is happening is as you're adding more users uh, to any of these uh, these channels, the social connections these users bring and are how connected these users are socially, that's multiplying exponentially. Now think about the average user on Facebook having 130 friends. Who are these users? And that's a very important part. You know, that's where the big brand opportunity is uh, because these are users on the right side who are connected to your existing users and they're socially connected they are the ones who are similar profile background, maybe they're having similar interests, uh, maybe geographically located uh, close by, or having similar economic psychographic profiles. So this right side audience is the big social opportunity for the brands. You know, using your existing users uh, is a big leverage that you got to reach out to these audience. And in order for to reach out to this audience, we believe there are two things that are extremely important. And one is to empower customers to go out and talk, and we exactly saw how Redbox is doing that, and uh, uh, we'll be talking about how Cyril Lee, uh, did that too. Uh, so empowering your customers to reach out and spread that word or offer or great content, anything, is the first important one. And then the second one is the motivation. You know, you gotta provide the right motivation. Uh, when people talk social, Obviously, they need to feel a little exclusive about it. That is, they are bringing this to their friends, and that's a very important aspect. Whether it's be cool content, or it's a great offer, or something exclusive about, so people want that uh, exclusivity when, they, when you expect them to go and talk to their friends. And if, com if, if, if these two aspects are combined, we really see that campaigns go hugely social and viral, and one such great example is with uh, a great customer here from uh, Sara Lee. Uh, Mike manages the Jimmy Dean and several other brand products uh, marketing for uh, Sara Lee. I'll leave it to him for talking about this uh, social couponing campaign Sara Lee did. Thank you. So I'm in shopper marketing and I manage all the brands for Sara Lee for the cons customers I'm responsible for. So. Definitely the Jimmy Dean Delight Sandwiches um, is a huge brand for us. Um, the idea is to make sure that we were relevant in the season. Delights is lower calories, so we definitely want to focus on bringing, you know, building household penetration. So we definitely wanted to incent our, cons our customers to want to buy more and share, right? So we, what we were challenged with at Walmart is to come up with a program that's going to grow our sales on a relevant item during the January time period. So what we did is we wanted to go after, of course, our consumer, which we know is uh, mom, 
and we definitely wanted to go. So now we know that Walmart does offer coupons on their uh, walmart.com site. And also all of you is uh, the a magazine that is exclusive to Walmart and they also have a um, social page on online. So what we did is we um, worked, partnered with Social Twist to come up with how are we gonna get our consumers involved and excited about wanting to try this item. So we definitely want to entice them. So we um, built an online page that was linked from walmart.com and all you on uh, .com. And you, it was a dollar coupon. And if you shared it with your three friends, your coupon became 250. So what's exciting about that, that made the item half off. That was very enticing. So that's how it, it worked. And it definitely, um, was um, exciting for us to do this and test this item. So as you can see on the traffic, that the traffic came, of course, from Social Twist, huge. I think what was interesting to us is that only 5% came actually from Walmart. So um, they were getting it from other, other venues across social media, which is exciting. Also, the exciting part is we learned a lot from this. And one thing we learned is this slide enabled us to understand where they were redeeming, where they were actually going to. So what I got from this is Florida is very important to us and that uh, we definitely want to focus on Florida. And also we knew that the popularity of the coupons, we knew that 64% was the 250, which only makes sense, right? And that the dollar was 30%. So we know the majority of our people that went online, they were clicking, they were sharing it, and they were getting their 250 coupon. This is interesting also, is email open was a rate of 60%. So we know that they were clicking through, which is great. That the referrals were coming through email not a surprise, but, um, and Facebook and Twitter even. But the click-throughs was higher on Facebook than it was email. The other interesting part is Twitter was less than a percent, but the click-through was high. So that's another great uh, thought process for us, and really we can build on that, right? And also, the redemption of that 250 was 81%. That, let's just say, is huge, because we know that coupons usually um, redeem about under a percent. So the average is about uh, 0.04. So 81% was definitely made it very successful. The other observations that we had on here was that referral. We know that as soon as we launched it, that the blogging was huge on this, which was very exciting for us, because you can't pay for that, right? So a lot of uh, blogging came and they were going to Saving with Amy and a lot of other websites for coupons. So we were definitely excited about that. So that's it. I think we're good. We got some time now, I think, probably. <clears throat> for questions. I think we'll, we're going to open it up for questions overall. Sure. 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 Um, so first, I want to um, I want to thank our panelists. I think the three great uh, case studies with some very interesting data. But I want to uh, uh, see if folks here in the audience have questions. And if you don't, I'm going to start firing questions at, the, at at these guys. So right here, go ahead. Yeah, for Redbox mm -hmm. on the uh, social media referrals. Mm -hmm. So the question was for Redbox, was there, any, was there any concern about using social media for referrals given that their consumers, if they're physically renting media, less going online like a Netflix, was, it, was that a good match, right? Social referrals for their customer base. Yeah, sure. You tell me. All right. Everyone hear me fine? All right. So gr great question. Um, so I, I think there's a couple things buried in there. One is, um, I think it's a, it's a fallacy that Redbox consumers are less tech savvy than a Netflix user or a streaming consumer. 
first of all, we see, we see a lot of split behavior. The, the services actually complement each other very nicely. And what, what we really hear, though, is it's all about convenience. And because we're where people shop every day, you still got to go out to groceries. You're still going to stop in a 7-Eleven, get a six-pack of beer. Because we're there, it's hard to beat something in your hand, easily portable, and capturing that impulse buy. So tech savvy, they're still there. And then social engagement for us is actually, it's, it's through the roof. I know Netflix is, they're making big investments, obviously, in social now. They've seen some impressive growth recently. Um, it, just go take a look at the numbers on something like a Facebook and you know, see where we're at. It's um, red boxes, you know, we went from, I guess the last 12 months, went from about 30,000 fans to 2.5 million on Facebook. And it's a very vigorous community around entertainment content uh, and the, the deal and money they're saving. But great question. Thank you. A question over here. Mm -hmm. No, we did not. So did you ever hear the question, so it was for Sara Lee, did they do any uh, targeting within Facebook for their campaign? Actually, it's just a general geo-targeting question. Right. I run into all the time, and you must have data to drive the further investment, or did you do nationwide, like, no geo-targeting, and you found that it wasn't able to support really much of the growth? Well, exactly. What it was is no geo-targeting, basically on walmart.com, which it's national, correct? But what we, we did see is what happened. It's, it's interesting because the coupon was based on Walmart, correct? But when it went viral, it actually geared to um, Florida, and the redemption went to Publix. So um, what we saw is that it was based on all blogging and referrals through social. As opposed, as opposed to geotargeting to begin with, right? Correct. And we did not do that. And for me, I would much rather have had it at Walmart. But uh, it did um, definitely geared. It shows you that Florida is, and it is definitely a state of huge uh, coupon usage. So it definitely went it its own way. So Tony, I've got, oh, we've got a question right here. OK, let's go, go ahead. So the question was for Social Twist, uh, do they do anything local, right? In fact, we probably asked, we could ask these guys up here just, you know, how, how they think about local. Yeah, we do have an offering for uh, geo-targeting of offers. But in, interestingly, what we see is that many times because of the human filtering aspect, when somebody is trying to share, they think about the, uh, who are the right people to share. And as we saw in the Jimmy Dean case, it so happened that people shared with more local people in on those three geographies because significantly higher if you see those three states they were about 60 percent of the total so that means people were sharing local and then people were going back and redeeming it uh, in those three states so there is a, some sort of a natural selection and a human filtering process happening there uh, of course as far as social twist goes we do have an offer there offering there Yeah, at Extol, we do do some geotargeting for companies that want to do that. So how do you drive social uh, leads, for example, uh, through geographies? Uh, some of the daily deal sites is an example where they don't have um, deals in all locales, for, uh, you know, as an example. However, most brands have customers in every location, and if you've got an application where you're trying to get your customers to share with their friends, you, wanna, you, you don't want to specify the target audience there. You want to let it go viral. And what ends up happening, as, as it did with the Social Twist campaign, is you figure out where the sharing occurs most for, for your brand, and, and that's an interesting insight. So it's more keep it wide and then figure out, uh, and then use the insights to kind of figure out your local strategies, how we think about it. Question right here.
So the question was, what is Coke finding valuable using when they use mobile out in the open market above and beyond just events? Certainly, and I think a lot of what I talked through was not just the live event and the coupon, but it's how do I drive basically to my main campaigns. And so for us to drive awareness um, through paid media, and basically, you know, so basically paid media through mobile banners, et cetera, is core to our business. Um, but then when consumers actually get engaged, how do I basically reward with fulfilling content? So basically the, the platforms and the way that we do engage is very much around, um, you know, basically, you know, giving, and again, you heard me say the Coke in one hand and the phone in the other. How do I basically take that impulse point and what do I basically do to drive consideration? And so when you have that, how do I basically reward you for basically purchase? And, and, and really, you know, you'll see a lot of that in our teen programs and you'll see us work a lot with um, big properties. You'll see us work with, with, with music talent, with sports talent, and, and really having that association. The next level, and, and where mobile is really a key play for us as well, is just around our loyalty programs. So again, and it comes down to loyalty and, and basically utility. How do I make it easier for you to collect your points, to get to that, that reward? And again, basically you know, rewarding for purchase behavior is something that you know, is a platform we invest in and we basically build out. Was it, I had we didn't, uh, another question. I thought there was somebody back here. Right there. There you go. So there's a question for the entire group, which is with, the, with the, uh, the troubles that the print media is facing, what are the future of uh, coupons in general, and how are, how are brands thinking about, or retailers thinking about coupons and the use of coupons with that kind of sea change going, going, going on? Maybe what we'll do is we'll just start, with, we'll just have the brands answer, we'll just go boom, boom, down like that. Right. Sure. Yeah, so it's... Uh it's a good question. I don't know that there's one, uh, one answer out there, but um, you know, I think for us, you know, Redbox, we've never really played in the traditional print space, so FSIs, things like that. Uh, never really, that hasn't been a legacy for us. Um, what we see today, it depends a lot on, we use Redbox as a reward not just for our own consumer behaviors, but also for uh, different consumer packaged good companies like the folks we're sitting up here with today and so we typically will work those brands and figure out what their objectives are and figure out distribution methods to match. Um, big fan of Catalina in certain environments. We, uh, we've done a lot of impact for the companies that we have tighter relationships with and longer lead times. Uh, and then we're seeing a lot of success as well um, with uh, on pack leading to digital experiences, either microsites and we're just starting to dip our toe in dabbling in mobile. But for us, it's typically, it's something that starts at retail, starts with either a qualifying purchase or some sort of behavior, and drives for us to a digital experience. And obviously, great from database building, things like that, ongoing relationships. So in our eyes, I think that's a, a really rich, fruitful place for the, the couponing and reward space to be heading. Yeah, and I think from our perspective, it's a great opportunity. I mean, we, we, we see the issues today. And, and so, you know, people ask me in terms of just mobile couponing. You know, the ability to offer the coupon is not the issue. It's the ability to redeem the coupon. So, so as, as we work with all, of our, with all of our customers, it's basically a, it's a, it's a tough landscape today. But I think everybody understands Basically, you know, we've talked about the rate of change of technology, and as we see point of sale integration, you know, 2D codes for us. I and mean, we have a 1D code on all of our packaging. What's the role of 2D? Because I can do, whether it's 2D, 2D or, or whatever it is, how can I basically take that information, drive it to offers, drive it to loyalty, try, drive it to purchase? Um, and so for us, I think, you know, this is one area that we are really leaning forward into and driving the market to standardize because clearly there's, there's this huge advantage to us and, and really see the value in it. I think that's a great question. And um, for us, I see that we know the, the traditional FSI is not going to go away. 
but what we are seeing is that, of course, online couponing is, is a big business, but also to card for most manufacturer or retailers, um, especially in the West, it, it's to card, and they definitely want to promote that. So I think that that is definitely where it's heading. Um, Just explain to card what, the, what you mean yeah, by that. Yeah, to, to the loyalty cards for most retailers um, across the country. So you would download the coupon, it would go onto your card, and then you would scan your card at purchase, and it would come right off. So it's definitely something that you're going to see in the future. I think it's going to grow. And then mobile couponing is also definitely part of it, where you would scan it right at the register. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. So I've got a question then for, for all, all, all three brands, which is, um, do you view what the, the case studies you just talked about, is this a, like an early on experiment in the use of mobile and coupons or social and coupons? Or do you think this is the first step and you see a, a series of campaigns doing this? How, how are you viewing, how kind of are you viewing what you just talked about? How are you viewing that in the greater context of a, of a marketing strategy? Um, yeah, I think for Sara Lee, what we see this is definitely, um, it was a test and we could say it was just a little successful for us. So um, it'll definitely continue in the shopper marketing arena, arena for us. But um, yeah, we are definitely gonna move forward with it. We see it a great vehicle. Um, again, it was high value, but it would be a, definitely a vehicle for uh, new item launches, something where you definitely wanna get um, you know, trial. So we are actually started one on Friday. So we're, we're very excited to move forward. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly this for us is a, is a huge space. We know people are more connected than they ever have been. And so for us globally, take an event like the Olympics or take an event like the World Cup, which is truly a global event that, you know, Coca-Cola is the soft drink sponsor. Um, the ability to connect people, the ability to have, you know, stations where, you know, cities will show up to watch events together under the umbrella of Coca-Cola. The ability to bring that engagement out is, is just is key for us. So, you know, what, what we've done with Moses and what we continue to do is basically it starts at the, the grassroots level. We've done this for years. In Africa, if you look what we do around programs with Sprite and training programs for kids, we have a lot of experience in this. We do this. This is where we see our best results. And basically bringing that up to a global stage is it's only going to get bigger and, it, and it's going to be a global stage for us, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're really gung-ho about the space. I mean, for Redbox, mobile, couponing, social in particular, that's our business when it comes to marketing. I referenced it before, but we don't, uh, you know, we're sort of missing that third leg of what you saw in the Coke presentation, which is we don't do paid media. So for us, we're, this is where we're placing our bets. We're starting with the philosophy of figure out the basics that work, scale the heck out of them as quick as you can, and then now we're starting to get into what are the more, more innovative things we can do? And now that we have this mobile database built up with some simple tactics, now that we have this engaged social base, how do you bring them all together and what are the truly innovative things you can do? What's that next evolution? Um, but it, it's definitely where we're placing our bets. We think there's a huge future there. So folks, we're out of time. You heard it here. M couponing via social or mobile means is clearly a way to engage your customers in the future. Thank you everybody for uh, your participation. Let's thank the panelists. Okay.